Hey guys, shortly after uploading the previous video where I reviewed the Polymaker 3D printer filament, I had a few questions asking about the slicer settings that I used to obtain the quality of prints throughout that review. I didn't actually use Slicer for, uh, for all but one of those items, I actually used a program called Cura. So in this video I'll be going over how to install Cura and most important, all the settings that I used in Cura to produce those quality parts. To download the Cura software, first go to the ultimaker.com website, then click on the menu button, click on products, and finally click the Cura software. Now the latest version of Cura that is available for download is this 15.06 edition. I didn't actually use this, I used the one previous. So to download the previous version that I used, click on see all previous versions. And finally for the latest version of the, uh, the, the release that I use is 15.04. So they've released a .2 iteration of that. So go ahead and uh, click that button and it'll then provide you with a download. Go ahead, download that software. Uh, just do the initial installation and I'll meet you at the main startup window. Upon launching Cura for the first time, you may be greeted with an add new machine wizard. If not, that's fine. Go up to the top left hand side, click on machine, click on add new machine, and that will launch the, uh, the add new machine wizard. Click next. The first question it asks us is the select your machine type. Uh, I'm using the, uh, the RepRap Prusa i3, so RepRap is here under the other, so I'll click on other and next. Uh, now it's asking for the type of other 3D printer that, um, that I'm using. I have the Prusa Mendel i3 here, so I'll choose that one. Uh, your printer might be slightly different, so hopefully it's in this list as well. Click Next, and that is it, followed by Finish. After completing the wizard, let's go and have a look at the defaults that it gave for our 3D printer. Up the top, click on Machine, and click Machine Settings. Here it gives us the defaults for the printer. For my 3D printer I've changed the uh, the maximum width which is the x-axis to 195 and same with the depth to 195 that's the y-axis. I've left the height or the z-axis to 200 that's fine. I've left the extruder count to 1, heat bed is checked of course, the build uh, platform is square, the g-code flavor is RepRap. Uh, and lastly over here the communication settings, I've changed these to the serial port and the, uh, the board rate speed that um, my printer communicates at. That is because you can print directly from Cura, which is really cool. So go ahead and make your changes and press OK. And next up we want to make sure that uh, we're in this expert mode. So if your uh, left hand side GUI interface does not look like this, simply go up to expert and select switch to full settings and you will have the same uh, setup that uh, I have here in front of me. Let's now load our STL file into Cura. To do that, click on the load button, choose your STL file and click open. I've already gone and downloaded the Batman bust uh, 3D part from the Thingiverse website. I'll place the link below now. Uh, Cura immediately deposits the part in the center of the build platform. Uh, we have these, these black arrows on the very left hand side here. So this is position zero. So this edge along here is the front of the build platform. We can move around this part just by holding down the right mouse button, which gives us the option to pan and tilt. We can zoom in and out by using our mouse wheel, scrolling in and out. We can move the location where this part will print on the build platform simply by holding the left mouse button and dragging the part around. While this part is selected, we have three other buttons down here. This first button gives us the option to rotate this part. Because this, this, um, this section here is the front of the build platform, I'd like the Batman piece to be facing me as it's printing. So to do that, click on the respective circle and uh, drag it all the way around. In this instance, 90 degrees. So now it's facing forward. The next option we have is scale. So looking at this piece, as it's downloaded from Thingiverse, 
uh, we have a height of 72 millimeters we have a depth of 46 and we have a width of 101 if we weren't happy with that size if we would like it to be bigger well we can adjust the scale so we can make it 50 percent bigger by changing the scale to 1.5 or if it's way too big we can actually make it smaller so we can make it 0.5 and that makes it a lot smaller on the build platform for this test piece though I think I'll choose uh, the middle ground I'll think I'll choose 0.75 and that gives us a nice size piece the last option that we have here is mirror so that gives us the option to flip this item um, in, in a mirrored sense on all three axes so if we if we flip the Z axis it'll flip it up and down if we flip the Y axis it'll face forward and back and finally if we flip the X axis it'll flip in the center from left to right however because this part is, is um, symmetrical from left to right on the X there is no change and finally we have on the top right hand side the view mode if we click view mode one of the options here which is really useful is called layers this changes the view to the tool path or the uh, or the print moves of how this part will be printed on the uh, on the build platform so this is really cool you can see uh, how each layer will be deposited before actually doing the print and you can scroll up and down each layer just by using the slider on the side and if we scroll in and out and pan uh, around this piece we can see uh, all the layers this uh, this information is is being updated constantly via what we what we've chosen on the left hand side which we will go over now from the left hand side we have four tabs basic advanced plugins and start ng code for the purposes of this video and showing you my settings I'm only going to go over the two uh, important tabs this is basic and advanced starting with the basic tab we have layer height so this is the quality of the piece for all the pieces that I printed in the past video I was printing at 0.1 millimeter so that's what I've set here the shell thickness um, the terminology here is different to slicer shell thickness is basically basically the number of perimeters so instead of telling uh, this, this program how many perimeters we tell it in a thickness how wide we want the uh, the shell to be uh, this is a multiple of the nozzle diameter so my nozzle on the e3d hot end is 0.4 millimeters uh, that means at 1.6 millimeters uh, as a shell thickness it's going to print four perimeters to make up that thickness if I wanted three perimeters I'd change it to 1.2 two perimeters to 0.8 so on and so forth next we have the option to enable retraction that's definitely checked uh, further down for this particular piece uh, I'm not going to choose any top or bottom infill so this is the bottom and top thickness so in slicer we we can select the number of top and bottom uh, layers uh, that that's what this is um, you can select this to a multiple of your layers so if I said I want the top and bottom thickness to be 0.4 it will use the layer height to calculate how many layers uh, the bottom and top will be so 0.4 uh, and at 0.1 layer height it'll make four, perimeter, uh, four layers uh, but for this piece I don't want any bottom at all same with infill density I've set that currently to zero because I can print this piece hollow however if I wanted an infill this is in percentage so the same as slicer you could put in for example 25 percent and it will create the infill at 25 percent uh, and as you can see as I'm updating all the options on the left hand side it's recalculating the uh, the G code file and also updating the estimated time it will take to print and also the estimated weight that this part will have changing that back to zero as I want this part hollow next down we have the speed and temperature settings so this is the print speed of the part uh, for this piece I want this part to, to look quite nice so instead of 40 I might uh, reduce that speed down to 30 millimeters a second for the printing temperature the temperature of the hot end uh, 200 degrees uh, also works quite well for the uh, PLA plastic that I'll be using I'll be using the polymax PLA in orange and as this piece is going to take you know a couple of hours to print I do want to use the heat platform just to ensure that the part isn't going to uh, to come off the platform during the print and I've set the the heat bed to 60 degrees uh, further down we have filament my filament diameter is 1.75 millimeter and the uh, the the flow 
we leave as 100%. If you are over extruding, so you're leaving blobs left, right and center with, with the print moves, you can reduce the flow percentage. Or if you are under extruding and you need to increase the flow rate, you can um, give it a positive so you can make it 120% for, for, as an example. Next up we have the advanced tab. This is where we set the nozzle diameter for your printer. Uh, my E3D hot end has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Retraction speed, with the Bowden extruder setup that I have, I can push mine to 150 millimeters a second to retract, and the distance that it will retract is two millimeters over that speed. Uh, next down, we have some uh, the initial layer thickness. So this is the very first layer that will be deposited on the, on the print print platform. Just like Slicer, we're able to, uh, to to do the first layer with different settings and the rest of the print. So 0.2 millimeters for the very first layer is a, is a nice thick layer to get some good adhesion. And same with the initial layer line width. You can bump this up if you're struggling to get the plastic to adhere to the build platform. Uh, cut off object from bottom can be can be quite fun. Let's just say that we only wanted you know, from his neck up to be printed, well, we can omit the first 10 millimeters from this piece. And as you can see, it's sunk the part into the uh, into the platform and it's only going to print from his neck upwards. But we want the entire piece here, so I'll change that back to zero. Uh, next, travel speed, I've set that to 150 millimeters a second. So this is a non-print move. This is moving while it's not printing. You want that nice and fast. If that's too slow, you could ooze all over the place during that print move. The bottom layer speed, once again, to ensure you have a, a, a good adhesion, a good solid first layer put down, you want to print nice and slow. So for me, I find 20 millimeters a second for the first layer to be, to be adequate. I leave the rest of the speeds here at zero. Uh, that means that they're just going to use the speed that you've defaulted for your, uh, for your print speed, in this case, 30. Uh, next up we have the cooling options, so enable cooling fan is certainly ticked because I'm printing this at 0.1 millimeter. I don't want the plastic to curl, so I have two fans blowing on either side of this part as it prints, so that's definitely ticked. And this um, option here is also very important. Mi uh, this is the, the minimum layer time uh, in seconds. Um, that the slicing program will try to print each layer. Now this is important. The reason why you want a minimum layer time is you want the previous layer of plastic to solidify before you deposit the next layer on top. Now this 15 seconds is the minimum that it's going to aim for. So if it calculates that the next layer will only take 10 seconds, it will slow down that print until it reaches at least 15 milliseconds. Uh, 15 seconds, sorry. However, it won't slow it down to zero. The minimum speed that will that um, uh, slicer or cura sorry will slice this to is 10 millimeters a second. So I've set this this piece to print at 30 millimeters 30 millimeters a second, but it could potentially slow down to 10 millimeters a second based on the minimum layer time that we have stipulated. And lastly, uh, when do the fans turn on? I've turned the fans on from 0.5 millimeters in height. So once again, just like Slicer, you mention which layer it wants to turn on. In this instance, you, 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 you tell it which height. 0.5 is layer four in this instance. Go ahead and click OK. Uh, and we are now ready to print. So to print, we've got two options. One is we can go up to file and then save the G code. And we can save the G code into a directory and then print with our external printing application, for example, like Prontoface, or we've got the option to print with USB. Let's give that a go. To print Direct3 Cura, we'll start by pressing the button Print with USB. That'll open up a new window which looks very similar. It looks just like Prontoface. This is automatically connected to the printer. We know this because the print button has become active. Before we click the print button, we can uh, set up the printer by uh, moving the y-axis forward and back, for example. We can move the, uh, the x-axis left and right. Uh, we can move the z-axis up and down. But in this instance, we just want to go ahead and click print.
and here it is printed and sliced with the Cura software. Printing at 0.1 millimeter layer height certainly has its advantages. The detail of this piece, especially around the face, facial features, is really quite extraordinary. Every piece of detail that the STL file had has been printed uh, with this piece. Um, this piece is also quite smooth uh, to the touch, being printed at 0.1. Uh, however, it wasn't smooth sailing throughout the entire print. I did notice around the shoulder region, so on this side and on this side, there are a couple of very small gaps. We could um, fix that with the next print by increasing the number of shells or the number of perimeters for this piece. So we printed this at 1.6 millimeters. I would probably bump that up to either uh, 2.4 millimeters or even 2.8 millimeters just to be sure that if we wanted to print this again we wouldn't um, have any gaps on uh, on his shoulders and also I noticed it was printing quite slowly around the the head region here and I don't think it needed to print that slowly in this section so I would probably decrease the minimum uh, layer print time from the 15 seconds probably down to 10 seconds uh, however, I would leave the minimum print time at 10 millimeters a second because for the ears, they're, they're quite small and narrow and you don't want to be printing these too fast as you may lose some definition. But as it stands, they were printing quite slowly, so the full resolution of the ears are there. Uh, granted, uh, I did notice some stringing in between, which was easily fixed, of course, with a, uh, with a hobby knife. But um, probably to try to omit that next time, either play around with the temperature of the plastic or even the retraction settings to see if we can um, mitigate some of those issues. But there you have it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you next time.